Hello everyone, um, my name is uh, Dave Richards. I'm the Business Development Manager for the West. Thank you for attending today. Um, today's course is actually we're going to look at our uh, miniature circuit breakers, focus a little bit more on our arc fault and dual function breakers. So thanks once again for attending. So I always kind of like to start this one out with a, a couple of Darwin Awards because really breakers are all about the safety of the home. And it's amazing to me oftentimes when I get out on job sites and see how people are actually installing the product. Um, it, it, it's, it's actually quite funny. So let's start out with a couple of funny pictures and let's see how you, you feel about this. So this was the first one. Here's an electrician. You know, I got to get a light in above the pool. So, you know, he's feeling he's pretty ingenuitive with the, the ladder. You can see he's got water. You see the water line about waist high on him here. Um, you know, another, another great reason why we've got uh, GFI breakers. Let's look at another one real quick. This one's going to get you laughing as well. So when the first forklift doesn't work, let's get another one, right? So you got a couple of guys here and, and they're all standing around. You got guys hanging off the first forklift trying to get this. I don't know how much that, that device weighs that they're trying to that piece of a test equipment up there. But just crazy stuff people do. The picture on the right, you got an aluminum ladder and you've got it hanging across, you know, a bunch of electrical lines. It's it's just crazy, right? So let's let's look at another one. And this is actually inside a home. So there's two pictures here. They look very similar, but there's two pictures. So the pictures on the right here, you'll see they've just used a standard open uh, can light. This is in a shower. And you've got a light switch right there next to the to the valve. It's crazy. So once again, a good reason why we've got breakers uh, helping to protect these homes. The picture on the right, this one just made me laugh because they've done a nice job, all this tile work, and look at where the furnace is. It's in the back side of this shower. So hopefully they're not uh, turning the water on full here. And then you've got the toilet right there too. It's just kind of crazy, you know, some of these these DIY projects is, you know, once again, a, a good reason why we, we do breakers or we manufacture breakers and get them in the home. So one last picture here. This one is actually pretty standard. This is something that we, we see oftentimes. You just don't see behind the wall. Um, we need to be cognizant of, of how we're stapling our cables to the wall. You can see there in the lower right, um, this is just plain over, over, um, being overzealous on the on the staple hitting that too hard and in time that starts to arc there this picture on the top left is another good example of somebody mounting something on the outside of the wall and it just basically went right through that cable you know once again another good reason why we have breakers today instead of fuses um here's here's another one now this one this one will get you laughing i know it will but here's a couple of good old boys, um, you know, the weekend, we got to have our beer on the table here. But take a look at some of the ways that they've, they've got this radio and telephone thing sitting up on top of here. They've got, they've used their flip flops here to hold the power strip. They've got, you know, tape over here for the extension cord. I mean, this is, you know, you're in a bunch of water here. This is a true accident about to happen. Now, Luckily, we've got GFI breakers, once again, that we can use here that will help protect these good old boys. So let's get into talking about the breakers a little bit more. Now that we've had a good, a good chuckle or two, let's talk about breakers. And kind of, you know, this is the pyramid of direction that we've taken with breakers thus far. So when we first came out in the early 50s, you'll notice we had thermal mag breakers. Then the next big innovation that we had uh, was really about the GFI breakers which is right here. And then recently, um, in about 2009, really is when we launched the arc fault, the, the industry launched arc fault breakers. And then the most recent breaker that we've launched is dual functions. So we're gonna go through, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about those breakers. But as we look at, you know, our, our we have two basic types of breakers. So we have those breakers that fit in the QO panel and we have those that fit in a home line panel. The home line panel breakers are one inch breakers, while the QO panels are three quarter inch. 
QO, you can get them all the way up to a three pole, where in home line, you can only get two poles. Then here's a couple of other big differences here. In a home line product, we can only get up to 10 AK or 10 KA ratings, where we can go all the way up to 65 with QO. And then most importantly, you've got the busy trip, which is an indicator of a little red indicator here that tells you when the breaker is tripped, where on a home line product, the handle just trips to center, and that's your indication that the breaker is tripped. What is our, our competition in regards to size of breakers? So in the case of Eaton, they too have very similar design in that their CH product is three quarter inch, uh, where our QO is three quarter inch, and their BR series, which is more uh, relative to our home line product, is one inch. Then you've got Siemens with a one inch. They have th uh, two different sizes or di different styles of products, but it still is truly a one inch breaker. And then, you know, GE, they too have a one inch breaker. So let's look real quick. Now we're not gonna go into a lot of details, but I always like showing this off because it's interesting to see really how a breaker works. So there's a couple of things here that we're gonna talk about in particular. Every breaker, every thermal mag breaker, let's say, has to um, have these types of components in here. A couple of things I'm gonna point out here. Um, so you've got this, um, bimetal piece right here, which is really what tells the breaker that, hey, look, we've got an overheating situation and we need to trip. So this actually stabs over and, and helps make the breaker trip. What a lot of people don't realize is that we don't use copper anymore. We use a titanium type uh, contact, but here's your two contact points. So this jaw right here is actually what stabs onto the bus along with this jaw over here. Now this is just a mounting jaw. This is actually one that has the power running through it. Then you'll see the other side here, which is the contact. So in normal open or uh, closed position, this is closed tightly. The breaker is working correctly. This is showing the breaker in a tripped position. So you'll see the contacts are, are away from each other. Now this is in the, you know, this picture is blown up. So realize that there's not a lot of gap in between those, those contacts. It seems like there's there's a lot, but you know, picture how small this breaker is. A couple other things I'm going to point out here. Um, this piece here is the busy trip in a home line, as I just discussed. That piece would not be there uh, because we're just going to trip to a mid position. All right. So this is a good look once again on a standard thermal bag breaker, and everybody looks very similar. We're going to have a couple of things. And the one thing I want to point out, this is what makes a, a Square D product very different from our competitors. And it comes down to this double wrapped coil right here. So this is the piece that has the biometric type product that I showed you just a minute ago, I kind of pointed out. But by having a double wrapped coil, that allows us to actually trip much faster than our competition that only does a single wind. What that does, that actually creates a stronger magnetic field which then we can sense when, when there's an issue and we can trip much faster. So guys, let's a quick review of, of our competitors. And, and this is kind of our, our big guys that we're out against. But this is a good way to kind of show you uh, quickly what our breakers really are. So a three quarter inch format, we understand that's QO. Trips to center, that's QO. But we do have busy trip and QO where some devices in Eaton have, have a device that will actually give you a window so you can see that it's tripped. Their BR series does not, and our competitors don't have that either. Um, the real key here that, that I, I see a, that makes a big difference, as well as the electronics that we just talked about inside, is the fact that we lubricate our connections. Mm -hmm. Now that ensures that we've got a good solid connection on that bus, we don't have any hangups, and then it also protects it against any kind of moisture or anything uh, getting in there and onto that uh, connection. All right, and then we test everything. This is something that we're not sure our competitors do. They may, they have to test, but whether or not they test everything off the line or not, we do. That's another big plus for our product. So let's talk a little bit more about what we call advanced function breakers. So this is anything that's that's a breaker that's not a standard thermal mag breaker. So real quick, um, 
what we've done, what Square D has done, is done a great job at I, quickly identifying what, by the handle color, what type of breaker is in there. So for you as a contractor, you have that dead front on there. You can easily identify what kind of bra breaker is in there simply by looking at the test handle or the test button. So in the case here, the ones we're going to really focus on are yellow, which is the ground fault. We'll talk a little bit more about the white, which is the arc fault. And then we'll talk about the new purple button, which is on our dual function breakers. At a standard breaker real quick and what it does. So a standard thermal mag breaker, right, is really just sensing, it's sensing heat, right? So if that breaker starts to feel like there's, there's a hot load on there, it's going to trip. And then there is a short circuit, so line to ground. Um, that's not the same as ground fault, but that's why that's what a standard breaker will trip on. Let's look at what ground fault does. Now this this was a great addition to the to the community when we added ground fault. It's a much safer breaker, especially for you know like our good old boys that were in the pool, right? Thank goodness for GFI. Otherwise, those boys would be uh, in a lot of trouble. They'd be making a trip to the hospital. But this does this does align to ground. It also does neutral to ground, which is which is very important. That's what makes the big difference between a standard breaker is we're actually picking up that neutral load as well. So we can make sure that that, that circuit is protected and, and those downstream are protected. This is an interesting thing. Most people don't realize how much milliamps of voltage it takes to actually cause issues from a, from a personal standpoint. So we're not going to spend a lot of time, but just know that it only takes 30 milliamps to actually stop your heart. Um, so it's very important that we make these homes safe. And that's, once again, a great um, pitch for GFI, right? As kids start sticking things in those receptacles and other things like that, you know, we need these breakers to trip very quickly because it doesn't take much more before you're actually um, in a very bad situation. All right, so let's look a little bit closer once again at the ground fault and what it does. It, it basically, here's, here's the biggest piece right here, is that that ground fault, once it sees a line to neutral, a line to ground of greater than five milliamps, that's when the breaker will trip. So keep that in mind as we go through this presentation today. It's, it's, the tripping point is five milliamps. That's the threshold. So as we, as we start adding GFI, as you know, to the code, 2014 code now requires that we put ground fault and arc fault in the, uh, well, ground fault, arc fault in the laundry rooms and the kitchen. But this is a good reason why we have ground fault in the laundry room and other areas is because you've got a lot of water that can actually get in there. And this is really about, you know, water and wet areas, as we all know, water and electrical don't mix well, um, depending upon which side of the equation you're looking at, right? It's a great conductor. But anyway, this, this pulls out the code, the reason for the GFI. So what areas do we actually cover with GFI today? This is pretty standard for you, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on here, but it's, it's kind of a nice little pinwheel that kind of describes where we've got to go with, with GFI today. Let's 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 look at arc fault. So we're gonna we're gonna look into the arc fault breaker a little bit, and then we'll get into dual function. So what is the arc fault? So here's another cutaway, which is a great picture that shows you what really an arc fault breaker does. And oftentimes you guys are asking, hey, can't we make this thing smaller? Well, I think in this picture you can see very clearly that the <laughs> electronics in there. I mean, we can make it so small, but there's a lot going on inside here. So just a couple of things to note. Um, the one thing that I like to point out is that there is an MOV in here um, that actually helps give small amount of surge protection to the circuit board. When I say small amount, it really kind of protects it so that we don't have issues in there. Um, but surge 
uh, is definitely still something we want to think about from an overall perspective. We won't cover that today, but, but keep that in mind as, as you're looking at products when you're doing, doing a new home. Um, the solenoid right here is actually what kicks this off. So when the breaker says, hey, look, I sense either a ground fault in the case of a dual function or an arc fault in this case, this solenoid kicks off and that's actually what kicks that breaker. Earlier, we talked about the contacts. Here's a good indication. This breaker is in a closed position, so it's, it's active. And so you can see the, the contacts making, making a connection right here. The other, the other piece I want to point out is that this is actually where the ground fault happens. Here is the basically the CT that listens in on the neutral and then picks it up on the on the hot lead over here. But anyway, this, or the hot lead, and this is what what tells you, or basically how we monitor that system. So, um, and then the other thing you'll hear me talk about, or you you hear a square D person talk about, is the the IC chips that are in here. These are pretty powerful little chips. We've actually upgraded those chips so they're faster and gives us more headroom so we can continue to put in different algorithms in there and firmware to keep this up to date and the latest and greatest for you. What, what is the difference here? Um, early on when we first launched arc fault breakers, keep in mind we were only looking at one type of arc. This is why we call it a combination arc fault breaker. This is it. Combination doesn't mean that it's GFI and arc fault. The combination means that we're looking at both parallel and series type arcs. That's what makes the biggest difference between this breaker and the breaker that was built in the early uh, stages of arc fault. So let's look at that real closely. What is a parallel arc? What is a series arc? So a parallel arc is between two wires series is within inside the same wire itself. So we could have some arcing. A lot of times this happens with uh, computer cables and things like that, that you're always winding up and throwing in a case. You know, we could get a little arcing going on inside those braids because that cable is not a solid uh, core. It's mostly made up of braids. And those braids eventually, as you start to bend them, will start to um, come apart. And you could end up with a couple of these um, actually breaking which then they will there will be an arc between those two breaks um, anyway good picture there so let's talk about where the code changed and where we actually started having to add arc fault so this is a good um, just a quick history right you got 1999 when we started adding arc fault we added um, more locations in 2008 so we added the family room the living room dining so we're moving into more than just uh, bedroom space. In the 2014 code, as I mentioned just a moment ago, we've now moved into the kitchen and the utility. So that means the kitchen and the utility room have, are, are required now to have GFI on the counters, as well as arc fault running through those two areas. So we'll get to that here and the reason behind us building a, a dual function breaker. This is always interesting. Um, I find this a great slide. This is as, as current as 2014. So we've had a little bit more history. But the key thing to notice here is you can see the red line represents the housings built. The blue line represents fire. And this is since 2003. And um, you can see we associate this with arc fault and, and the drop in electrical caused fires because we've added arc fault. So you can see a dramatic difference now and a drop in how many electrical fires there are in, in the current homes today. So this is the next slide here actually shows it a little bit more in detail. And the green line actually represents appliances. Look at the trend here in appliances. Now this is because appliances are getting smarter. They've got more devices in there. They've got gadgets and gizmos now that they're adding to the front door. So they're getting smarter, but that also means that there's a larger potential. What you'll see here is the red line actually represents um, electrical fires. So as, as the electrical fires have decreased in time, we're starting to see a trend with the appliances. So. Once again, this will kind of level out, but it's an interesting slide to, to note. 
And this once again just kind of pulls it out a little bit more. Same kind of thing, but it but it just shows uh, single family building fires, and once again just solidifies the need and the um, the safety that Arc Fault. I wanted to point out the any any C code that actually um, now requires it in the kitchens and laundries, laundry areas. That's part of the 2014 code. Uh, some of the areas that you're working in today don't are not on 2014, but just recognize that the 2014 code does add these two areas. Um, this is just a quick review. What we wanted to do is point out uh, we offer offer arc fault breakers in 15 and 20 20 amp handles. We offer them in a single and a two pole. The two pole. Uh, arc fault breaker is really, and we'll get into a little bit more detail in the next slide, is really a shared neutral. Um, keep in mind, now we, we did another uh, presentation on plug on neutral, but this is a good picture of what a pigtail breaker looks like, which is what we're, we've been used to for years. And then the new plug on neutral breakers, we alleviate that pigtail. So keep in mind, we're one of the only companies that offer a plug-on neutral for both BR series or BR, both uh, home line products and QO. The reason I bring up uh, Eaton, Eaton has plug-on neutral in their uh, CH line, and they are introducing one for their BR series. So they'll just be the two companies that that offer a true plug-on neutral design. As I mentioned earlier, they do carry. Uh, they're combination arc fault breakers, so we're do doing both series and parallel testing. The other thing that we'll point out, we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on, is the time saver diagnostics. Uh, that's going to be important, especially when you go out and, and you need to figure out what's going on with a, with a particular circuit. As I mentioned, we've got a two-pole uh, arc fault breaker. Uh, this allows you to now to use this in more of a renovation standpoint as well as new construction. It uses the old three wires, so the neutral is common, and you can use a three wire, device or three wire uh, configuration out to the bedrooms or such. It's a great breaker, it uses the same technology. Basically, this is, this is, is using two arc fault breakers and tying them together, and we're just using the shared neutral. Let's talk about dual function breakers. What's the difference between an arc fault and a dual function breaker? Well, as I mentioned, standard breakers are, are just thermal mag. We talked about ground fault breakers, how we now pick up uh, the neutral to ground and line to ground. In a combination arc fault breaker, we're, we're taking care of both parallel and series arcs, as well as doing standard thermal mag type protection as well. So we're doing overload and short current. But in a dual function breaker, we're doing those three items plus ground fault. So meaning that we're going to cover we're going to cover overload, short circuit, we're going to cover parallel series type arcs, and now we're going to cover ground fault all in one breaker. You know, you're kind of going, well, that just makes total sense. And especially for the cost difference, we'll go over that a little bit here. There's a nominal cost difference when you take it all into in the into the picture of things. Now I can actually uh, wire a house very similar, and I'm just changing at the breaker. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you know, an arc fault breaker now, or I mean a dual function breaker, really, the key to a dual function breaker is it's actually going to save you time and money for this breaker. So, <clears throat> let's look at how this actually saves you time and money. Okay, so in the as I mentioned in the 2014 code, we added GFI breakers, and this, or I should say, not in the 2014 code, but normally you've got GFI breakers located in these locations, and that means that I'm either using GFI receptacles or I'm using a breaker. In most cases, in today's world, we're using GFI receptacles here. But look what happens if we put in a dual function breaker. Now these typical uh, areas where we're doing arc fault and maybe we have to add a GFI receptacle. Now we can pull those out and do this all with one breaker. This actually does save you a lot of money. 
this is another look now where we can actually take in all of the areas and really the garage is only the the, the last place in a home where you know you might want to use a gfi but we can actually use that dual function breaker and replace every gfi receptacle in the house and this gives us some flexibility because here's the key here guys is that normally in the family room if i have to put a receptacle on the outside of a home there's two things i have to do number one number one that's usually a dedicated circuit number two i've got to put an outdoor gfi in this location so that's more money but look at what we can do with a DF breaker now. We can actually take care of the family room, which is required for arc fault. And then we can also take care of that outside uh, location and keep it on one circuit. So now we've saved, we've saved that expensive GFI receptacle. We've saved all the wire that we had to run from the panel to that dedicated location. So it truly is a money saver. So let's wrap this up. I know I've, I've gotten a little bit long here, but let's wrap this up. This, this actually is a good comparison on why this is a money saver and a labor saver. So these are just typical costs. And once again, costs are different. This is just taken from a typical uh, DIY location, but you're paying for an arc fault breaker at DIY around 42 bucks and $14 for a GFI, which is a total of 56 bucks. Now, if you were to do that same scenario, move up to a arc fault breaker, which is a little bit more, or I mean a dual function breaker, which is a little bit more money, but now I'm dropping that $14 and I move to a $2 plate and receptacle. See the difference here? And once again, this is, this is just using typical DIY costs. So know that your cost will be a little bit different, but the savings will still be the same. You will save money by moving to, removing all your GFIs and moving to a dual function breaker. A real quick, just a, a quick summary here, right? Um, as we go through here, you know, there's there's a lot of things that the, the breaker itself can do. It also simplifies, the key here that I wanna pull out is it actually simplifies your installation. So now you can actually wire the house the same. You don't have to be more, uh, super cognizant of where do I have a GFI receptacle going? Where do I have, or a GFI circuit? Where do I have to put arc fault circuits? Now you can wire the house and you can simply change it out by the, the breaker you put in the panel. Um, <clears throat> the two pole arc fault breaker is really what we're, we're depicting here is that now, instead of having to upgrade to a, a, a more expensive receptacle, now we can use in, in remodel applications, we can use that two pole breaker, uh, that two pole arc fault breaker, and still use your three wire configuration without having to go back and, and actually install a new wire um, doing the upgrade in that room. The other thing to keep in mind too is that you know, in upgrades by using a dual function breaker, we can alleviate having to put in that GFI receptacle. So a lot of pluses here for, you know, arc fault and dual function breakers. I want to get into the last thing we want to cover um, is troubleshooting. Um, this is where, you know, we always just scratch our head and we pull our hair out. It's like, oh man, this this breaker is tripping and continues to trip. One thing I want to point out though, is that when a breaker trips, that means something's wrong. That doesn't mean that the breaker is defective. That means there's something wrong on that current or on that circuit. And that's why the breaker is important. As we talked about early on, you know, it's all about safety. Well, you know, homeowners and are, are quick to say, Hey, look, my breaker trips. So they're calling you and saying, Hey, come fix this. Well, Usually, it turns out that there is a problem in what they've done, the homeowner, or something they've added to the circuit. So what's the right way to kind of troubleshoot this, right? So this is a quick flow chart. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but the upper right-hand corner is where we want to spend our time. And because these breakers, and I say these breakers, our, our dual function breaker and our arc fault breaker, 
has a means for you to troubleshoot. And it's, we call it time saver diagnostics. And these are the trip codes right here. So if it trips in one second, two seconds, or five seconds, it's going to give you an indication what's going on with that breaker. So we do this time saver diagnostics through the push to test button, the P PTT button. And that's the typical button that you see. It's the test button right on top of the breaker that, you know, when you get that breaker installed, the inspector comes out, he's going to push that button to make sure that the breaker is working correctly, the circuit is wired correctly. Well, we also use that push to test button to do our diagnostics. So how does that work? Well, let's look at it. And keep in mind that your Square D salesperson can get you these little cards that has this, this information on it. Also note that inside the box of every arc fault dual function breaker, that, that packing material that you see in there is actually an owner's manual and it has this same information on it. So if you do get it lost and, and you need those codes, open up that, that, um, that literature that comes with the breakers and you'll, and you'll find the same thing. But it is kind of handy to have these um, little cards uh, they're the same size as a business card, so it's easy to keep in, in your truck or, or handy. Um, but here's how the codes work. As I mentioned, um, you've got three very distinctive codes. There's an instantaneous trip, which indicates a ground fault. In the case of an arc fault breaker, right, there, that just means that there is some, some line to ground um, issues, right, but it's not truly indicating that it's a GFI issue. It's just indicating in most cases that there is a loose wire in a receptacle box or even in a fixture. The two second delay is an arc fault. So that's if you know we've got a par parallel or a series type arc, it's gonna pick it up. And in a five second delay, it usually means that it's a thermal overload, which means I've got too much on this circuit, too much going on. Or in some cases, it just means that the breaker is okay. So um, that's where you have to, you know, kind of work with your homeowner a little bit and find out what's going on. Here's a better look at that card that we have to offer. Um, so once again, this is a piece that you can get with your your uh, Square D salesperson, and he can get you some of these so that you can hand them out to your team members, and so they can have that handy. All right. And the real key here, guys, is that everything's preventable, and really that's what the breakers are meant to do, is they're, they're the safety behind keeping people from, from getting seriously harmed or hurt. Um, this is a good example of a place that, that you know, a, a warehouse or basically a home that could have been prevented had they had arc fault or dual function breakers in the facility. It was a total loss. Luckily, there was not a total, there was not a loss of life, but had they installed an arc fault or, or dual function breaker, this accident would not have happened. We do have literature that we can offer to you that you can hand to your customers to make them, to help them understand a little bit more the difference between their home that was built 50 years ago and their new home that you just wired. Um, breakers are going to trip. There's going to be some things that the homeowner is doing today that he did in that older home, but because of the safety that we've built into the breakers and built into the home, um, things may work a little bit differently. So we've put together a piece of literature that helps you explain that to the homeowner. It walks through the various things of a breaker from a very high level, but I'd encourage you to keep some of these on hand. Well, guys, once again, thank you for your time today. Um, hopefully we gave you some information that you can use in your business. As always, we appreciate all that you do and appreciate your support of Square D. Have a great day.